Um, we're here today with um, Mrs. Newman and her daughter Emily. Um, I am Dr. John Mew, and um, I would think the best way to introduce <laughs> the history of this case is to ask Rita Newman to say why she brought Emily to see me in the first place. I brought Emily to see uh, John Mew um, after he very successfully treated my son some years ago and um, he had a very uh, severe overbite, uh, I think it was, and he had a very weak chin and jaw and Dr. Mew brought out the jaw and uh, corrected his lip seal and he looked wonderful after the treatment had finished. So I had no hesitation when I had Emily some years later to bring her along to see Dr. Mew. When I first saw Emily, I could see that she had a very severe malocclusion. Um, most people would not notice it at the age of eight. You don't usually see how damaged the appearance is until the child grows up at the age of 12, 13. But at the age of seven or eight, you can understand what is going to happen. And her upper jaw was very, very small. It was also set back. And she had what we call a class three malocclusion. That's when the lower teeth are in front of the upper teeth. That doesn't often happen, but it nearly always produces a very unattractive face, particularly in women, as a woman with a flat face and a protruding jaw looks unattractive. And I could see that this is a problem. And so obviously I started by treat my treatment by enlarging the upper jaw and moving it forward. At that time, she had no cheekbones, but by bringing it forward, one creates quite nice cheekbones. And, and she was actually a very good patient. We had our usual hiccups, mm -hmm. a bit of lack of wear, mainly the problem being that she did not naturally keep her mouth closed like her brother did. So we spent most of our time on just that, trying to train her to keep her mouth closed. The appliance is um, very simple. We do a sequence, which we call stage one, two, three, and four. We start with stage one, which is essentially the appliance to widen and move forward the upper jaw. Um, it does that merely by turning a small screw, which widens it, and by wires placed behind the front teeth, which lengthen the jaw, so that it gets both wider and longer. And if you do that at a young age, sort of before the age of nine, you can get really big changes to this part of the face. And I think Mrs. Newman could see that quite soon. Subsequently, we then proceeded with stage two and three. That is to mainly the appliance to train the child to keep their mouth shut. So essentially, the first stage is enlarging the jaws. The second stage is training the child to have the correct posture, not only with their lips shut, but with their tongue on their palate and um, with their teeth just touching lightly most of the time. We started treatment for Emily, I think, when she was eight years old. Um, the initial stage is very quick, just four months. Um, all the rest of the time um, was mainly keep training her to keep her mouth shut. At one time, I do remember, um, she had failed to do that, and as a result, the teeth had relapsed a bit, and we had to retreat her, mainly just the widening of the upper jaw, moving it forward again. This is really quite common with people who have difficulty in learning to keep their mouth shut. Anyway, we continued, and after about four months, I was content with the position of the teeth, the bones, and the whole case. But at that point, she still was not keeping her lips together. So I said it would be wise if you could continue to wear this at night. What the appliance at night does 
is touch on the gum if you drop the jaw. Therefore, it's just a reminder to keep the jaw shut all night, every night. And most children who have to keep their mouth shut all night, every night, themselves, remember it's not um, making them keep their jaw shut, they themselves are making themselves keep their mouth shut. That will usually train them to do this naturally, but even then some people are better than others and I know Emily still leaves her lips apart some four millimetres or more. I've just um, had the pleasure of meeting Emily again now, having not seen her for how many years? Ten. Ten years. <laughs> And uh, um, I'm pleased that all her teeth are as straight as they could be. Um, however, I can see that because her lip seal is not quite right yet, her whole face is slightly bad. She tells me her wisdom teeth haven't come in yet, and I'm concerned that there is not quite room for them. If you get um, the full forward growth, there should be room for every tooth and we never need to do any extraction. Yeah. <laughs> Treatment for me was good, it was quite long, uh, possibly longer than some of my peers who had different, uh, more traditional routes for orthodontics, but I'm very happy because whereas them later in life, their teeth have gone back to being quite crooked and I feel like mine have stayed very straight, so even though it's maybe a little longer at the time, I feel like the results have lasted more successfully for myself. Uh, treatment for me was straightforward and not too painful. I enjoyed the fact that wearing a retainer, you could take it out. When you eat, a lot of my peers who had more conventional train tracks um, or fixed braces used to have to always carry around uh, toothbrush and toothpaste so that they could clean up after they'd eaten. Um, they also always had to wear bands on their teeth, which were quite unsightly and I, I believe quite uncomfortable, which I didn't. Um, and also with uh, this route of orthodontics, I um, think having it at a slightly earlier age was beneficial and I personally enjoyed that. I think having it, you know, pre-teen years, you're less aware of and self-conscious of how you look, whereas um, people that I know that had traditional um, treatment had it later in their teens, which I think is a time in your life where you're a little bit self-conscious anyway. So it was nice that I was able to have gotten all of my awkward phase successfully out of the way <laughs> before that time. Yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, by the sounds of it, um, it's given me my cheekbones, which I wouldn't have had otherwise. <laughs> um, I like the fact that it has uh, you know, changed my jaw and face as a whole rather than just my teeth, which I think is traditionally what usually happened and also in regards to the teeth um, I don't think that they've moved very much at all since I finished treatment whereas I know a lot of my peers have gone you know their teeth have recrossed um, sort of 10 years later after stopping treatment. I should say that when I saw Emily the first time I could see that unless she changed quite dramatically she would require surgery at a later age. Quite commonly, people who have one jaw set right back and the other right forward um, require both jaws cutting and repositioning. It's what I used to do when I originally trained, but since developing orthotropics, I realise it's quite unnecessary. If you can correct the growth of the jaws, there's no need for any surgery at all. Whereas, I'm actually quite concerned about the amount of surgery that is done on young children these days simply because the orthodontists do not know how to move the jaws. Uh, I heard about Dr. Mew in the car park of my son's school. Uh, he came out of school one day with uh, quite goofy teeth that I've got used to and a friend said, when, when on earth are you getting Matthew's teeth done? And uh, a dentist was present who said, you need, you need to, Matthew needs work immediately. <laughs> so uh, another lady who was standing with us, whose son came to Dr. Mew, said, oh, I know a very good 
uh, orthodontist in Purley and I would thoroughly recommend him. So I came to see Dr. Neil and he explained all the treatment to myself and Matthew and um, I was convinced that was the right way to go. So we didn't see anyone else and I was very, very happy with what Dr. Mew did and he gave him a chin, sit like Superman, uh, going from <laughs> chinless and goofy to Superman and handsome. Matthew had a BioBlock appliance which he uh, wore for several years and it brought his bottom jaw out um, and the treatment went extremely well um, except I had to wake him up every night to put it back in because he would take it out and put it on the floor and I'd wake him up and make him put it back in <laughs> but he did successfully complete the treatment. It's very handsome now. Yes, very, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, one, it's the one result thing, that um, was positive, aren't it? Rather than the treatment itself, wasn't it? Yeah. So, a bit after. I was delighted with both the results of the children, but I think what one of the things Emily forgot to say uh, when she was comparing the two things was that uh, not only did it uh, straighten her teeth and put her face in the right position, but also it taught you to close your mouth because Mr. Well, for <laughs> been told us already. No, no, no. But for most of the time, much better. Much she better. Yes, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. For most, oh. for the most part, you do, in the, for, and for the most part, I do because I've listened to everything. That, no, that's Just a good point. You should say that. Say like as well as I've picked up some tips along the way. That's have you learned any tips along the way? I have actually. <laughs> my tongue and the top of my palate of my lips together and my teeth slightly touching. <laughs> well done. <laughs>